Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to film another books on your radar video talking about everything that's coming out in March that I'm excited for. As I always say, these aren't books I'm definitely going to buy or even will read in the month of March or beyond, but I'm just flagging them because I really enjoy making these videos and I love finding about what's coming out and I love sharing that with you guys. So yeah, let's just dive straight in, I guess. Um, the first book I'm excited about is actually a Canadian release. That I can't find out when it's coming out in the UK, but I know we have watchers here from all over the world, so I thought I would share it anyway. And that's Run Towards Danger, Confrontations with a Body of Memory by Sarah Poli. And this is a set of essays. I don't know Sarah Poli personally, but she is apparently an Oscar nominated screenwriter, director and actor. But this is a story or this is a memoir talking about uh, the relationship between memory, the past, danger um, and that kind of stuff. So it says this this storytelling is chopped into six different essays. Each captures a piece of her life as she remembers it, while at the same time ex examining the fallibility of memory and the mutability of reality in the mind. The possibility of experiencing the past anew as the person you are now and not who you were then. So this looks at her ideas about stage fright, having a high risk pregnancy, um, dealing with concussion and yeah, basically just different big experiences in her life and thinking about how she remembered them and how she interprets them now. Really interested in the idea of memory, particularly related to trauma. I know there's been like new emerging research and obviously with some of the big um, trials we've seen recently, like Maxwell and Prince Andrew, there's a lot of um, expert witnesses on either side talking about memory and sort of how it manifests in relation to people's experiences of really traumatic things. So I think this will be re really interesting. And yeah, just interested in anything on the body really, so I thought it would be good. Okay, this is one of my most anticipated reads of the year. I think, I don't know if I should make a set of video on all of the uh, like chronic illness related books I'm really excited for and disability related books this year. Let me know if you'd like that. I might actually put it together as a newsletter because I think that might be interesting. This is The Invisible Kingdom, Reimagining Chronic Illness. Um, as the title suggests, this is going to be a book about chronic illness. Um, the Invisible Kingdom, I'm guessing, comes from the Susan Sontag conversation. And it's about the history of chronic illness. And I think touched a lot on it, the idea of invisibility versus exterior expressions of illness, um, tying the author's personal experiences with like wider social historical commentary. So yeah, super, super excited for that one. Okay, then I'm going to say this is pronounced Paradise. Yeah. Um, this is by Fernanda Melchor, who wrote Hurricane Season, which I have not read at the time of recording this. But while you, when you see it, I might have read it um, because Jay and Grace are really honoured me to read it. And I did buy a copy the last time Fitzcarolla had a like bit of a discount code going on. So I will be reading that one but I'm intrigued by this one mostly because it's short it's only 128 pages and if it's in the same style that hurricane season is which Grace and um Jay have both been like I don't think you're gonna like it because it's quite uh dense and like not enough full stops for me because they know I love a good full stop so this is set in a luxury housing complex I also think it's set in Mexico and it tells the story of two teenagers who live quite different lives and um, I think one is the security guard and one maybe visits or one lives there and it looks at deprivation and despair. Again, I've heard that her writing is particularly traumatic and violent to read, but I think her portrayal of Mexico is meant to be really interesting. And it says one protagonist is overweight and addicted to porn and fantasizes about seducing his neighbors. And the other is a gardener within the gated community who wants to flee his narco controlled village. So yeah, I think it's a lot on um, like the nation state of Mexico, drugs, um, organized crime, and then also individual experience it says it exposes the explosive fragility of Mexican society yeah definitely one I read and that's in translation if I didn't already say that okay one I've seen a lot around and I'm kind of skeptical of but I do want to read it to like get my own opinion of it because I feel like it's gonna be one of those books that's gonna blow up on social media and everyone's gonna be raving but I will be interested to get my own opinion on it I have seen it's rather chunky I do have the net galley arc of it because we saw how big it was I was like I'm not holding the way we had to hold the proof this is Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies by Maddie Mortimer, and it's a proof coming out with Picador. I think it's like one of the big debuts they're pushing this year. So it's about terminal illness in a young person. 
So it says, something gleeful and malevolent is moving through Leah's body, learning for her life from the inside out, a shapeshifter, a disaster tourist, traveling down the banks of her canals, it is spreading. A sudden diagnosis upends Leah's world and the boundaries between past and present begin to collapse. As the voice prowling in Leah her takes hold of her story and the landscape becomes indistinguishable, her and her family are faced with the hardest questions of all. How can you move on from the events that shape off when our bodies harbour everything? So it's a coming of age story set at the end of life. Obviously you think it's going to be quite harrowing to read, but I'm interested in the portrayal of illness and um, yeah, how they deal with those topics in the context of like a young person. So yeah, I wonder if it will be, I'm not sure if it's specifically cancer or not, but yeah, I'd be interested because obviously we had a wave of people writing about those kind of books, a la John Green and stuff. So I wonder, um, some people have had issues or spoken about like the ethics of writing those kinds of books. So I will be interested um, how this one toes the line. Okay, a book coming out in Australia that I want so badly and I don't think I will be able to secure a copy of, but I can hope it will come onto script at some point. And that's We've Got This, Stories by Disabled Parents, edited by Eliza Hull. It's an indie book out in Australia. I don't think it's the same people who do Growing Up Disabled, Growing Up Aboriginal. It's just um, sort of a similar vibe and it's looking at an anthology of different disabled people's experiences raising children which just sounds so brilliant something i've been thinking about a lot recently and some of the essays in disability visibility focus on this topic and they're some of the ones i love a lot so yeah i think it's really interesting to flip the script and have this from the perspective of disabled parents because we have been overrun with stories of able-bodied parents talking about their disabled children i think this is um yeah a really good perspective to look at yeah, it says it would appeal to readers of the Growing Up series, but it's not. I don't think it's like from them. I thought I would have put that on your radar for any Aussies watching or hopefully we can think it's going to get to script. Okay, this is one of my super, super anticipated books of the year because it's about cults. Um, this is Sins of My Father by Lily Dunn, a daughter, a cult and a wild unravelling. This is out with old Ryan on the 17th of March. Oh, I've been saying the dates, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and this is about a cult come commune in India and it follows the Bhagwan. If you watched Wild Wild Country and any of my cult videos, then you know I'm super interested in this uh, subsect of cults that existed in India at the time. She grew up with her father leaving when she was six and he, she, he left to follow the Bhagwan to India and she grew up in Italy and it says that um, her father was elusive, a publisher, a writer, but would appear with gifts from faraway places for with whom she spent the long hot summers of her teenage years with in the company of his wild and wealthy friends. Her father was a compulsive liar, a delinquent and abandoned his responsibilities for the pursuit of transcendence that took him into sex addiction within the Bhagwan cult. And this is a detective story colliding the narratives of um, Lily Dunn's experience growing up with like an absent father and the time she remembers spending with him and then also his experience joining the cult in India. So. Oh my god, I'm excited for this one. I really want it on audio. Okay, another book that I think is going to be like one of the blow up debuts of the year that people are going to be talking about is Vagabonds. This is a romp slash coming of age story set in Lagos and it takes you on a whirlwind journey through Lagos and it follows the deep hearts and minds of people and its inhabitants and it centres around the voices of the people who are powering modern Nigeria, the displaced, the queer, the women, the children in this world, girls and women can slip out of their bodies and their skins and men lose their heads and their souls drawn into this chaotic city energy creating new ways of living and it says that the title vagabonds is inspired by the real legal definition of vagabonds which is found in nigeria's same-sex marriage prohibitation act um, and a tribute to all of those who live joyfully in the hypocrisy of this law so yeah i think it's going to talk a lot about the queer context of nigeria and different people um, different people's experiences, a celebration of queerness and a poke at Nigeria's capitalism. Yeah, I think it sounds really good. Um, and I know a lot of people will be reading it, so I'll be excited to join in with that one. Okay, then this is a collection of eff essays? essays by Margot Jefferson, and it's called Constructing a Nervous System, and the byline is Cultural Reckonings, and it's a collection of essays all about black pop culture and jazz music, which, again niche non-fiction. I think Tom's really going to love this. Um, so it says, it, taking in the jazz and blues icons 
of Jefferson idolised as a child in the 1950s, the idea of what a female body can be. As incarcerated by trailblazing black dancers and athletes, she reimagines the work of Carla Walker, Cara Walker and white supremacy in the novels of Willa Cather and this breathtaking, eloquent account of criticism and vindication of the self. Don't know. Just sounds good to me. Sounds lyrical and yeah, interested in it. It's like rewriting a particular history or um, art movements. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be good. Okay, another one that just does what it says on the tin. Uh, Becoming King jo Kim Jong-un, understanding North Korea's young dictator. This is a somewhat biography of the leader of North Korea. I'm not sure you can call it a biography because I doubt it was consensual knowing the state of uh, North Korean politics, but it says when Kim Jong-un became the leader of North Korea in 2011, many expected his rule to be short, but he remains the unchallenged dictator of a nuclear rogue state with the weapon capacity to threaten the West. So this is really interesting. The writer is previous reporter Previous senior analyst at the CIA for Korea, and she received her PhD in South Korea. No, in Colombia and studied South Korea. She's a deputy secretary of state in the Bureau of East Asian Affairs. Sounds like pretty good credentials to write a book on a North Korean dictator. One I think I'll probably listen to on audio, and I imagine takes fucking balls to publish. It says this is the first book from a former intelligence community insider. I mean, she worked for the CIA. How do you even get clearance to write a book like this? Okay, um, next up is The Instant by Amy Liptrop. I've never read any of um, her work, but I think you'll recognise these covers because I think, is it The Outpost or The Outrun? Looks quite similar to this. And my mum read it, but I'm interested in this one because it's set in Berlin. So it follows Amy Liptrop. It's a piece of non-fiction nature writing-ish, and it says it follows her time when she leaves Orkney, which I believe is where the first piece of her memoir is set, and she moves to Berlin with a one-way ticket, renting lofts and sharing flats and looking for work. She explores the streets and nightclubs and parks to seek out the city's um, wildlife. I really like the idea of like a nature book set in a city, particularly a city like Berlin, that's pretty green, but also very, very like um, busy. And it says it looks at the unapologetic addictive power of love and lust and it explores cycles of the moon and the flight paths of migratory birds, a mesmerising power of Neolithic stonework and the trails followed by a generation who exist online. Hmm, okay. Yeah, just really interested. Love Berlin as a city. Would love to read more about it. And it's uh, unexpected wildlife. Okay, and then another one of my super, super, like, top tier anticipated books of the year is Homesickness by Colin Barrett. Colin Barrett wrote a short story collection. I I want to say like five years ago it probably says this is like a follow-up to his debut collection it just says um and I loved it so much some of the best short stories I've ever read and one of the stories in that is called Mad Horse or Black Horse and they like made an entire film about it which is really harrowing but it's about like a young autistic boy and organized crime and um horses and it's so good the madness of horses. Oh, I'm going to get really annoyed. I can't remember what it is, but me and Tom watched it and I bawled my eyes out. Anyway, this is another essay collection, um, short story collection from Colin Barrett. And it says it shows us the barren backwaters of County Mayo via Toronto and illuminates the lives of outcast misfits and malcontents. An eye for the abrupt and the absurd. I need to know anymore. I just love his stories. I think he's such a brilliant storyteller. He really evokes Irishness in his writing. And I think this will be no exception. So if you haven't read Young Skins, definitely get on that. And then I'll be looking forward to this one. He is a very violent writer. I will just say that in case that's not your thing. Okay, and then a one out with Fitzcarraldo is The Undercurrents by Kirsty March in Berlin. So this is a story of Berlin, a blend of biography, memoir and cultural criticism. Kirsty Bell is an British American art critic. Her marriage breaks down in her mid 40s, so she becomes obsessed with the history of her building and the adoptive city she lives in. She looks at the view from her apartment window and traces the lives of the houses opposite and the very inhabitants. And it says it's a hybrid literary portrait of Berlin's forgotten figures and a place and a portrait of a place that makes a case for the radical close readings of ourselves and our cities and our histories. Yeah, I think that sounds like it's going to be very good. And again, I'm into Berlin. I'm into reading about Berlin. Would love to live in Berlin. <laughs> 
Okay, and then one out with Daunt Publishing, which I haven't read right now, but I do have a proof of. Maybe by the time you watch this, I would have read it. This is Immediate Family by Ashley Nelson Levy. Again, just says it's published in March, doesn't have a date, but it's blurred by Casey Kitamura and Catherine Lacey. So it's a story of adoptive family and it starts at a wedding of her younger brother. The narrator is struggling to compose her speech. She was nine when her family travelled to Thailand to collect her brother Danny and their child life, in, their child life, their childhood in California was happy, but she holds their story up to the light and reflects, refracts in ways she doesn't expect. This book is a heartfelt letter to Danny as an exploration of their years growing up and the distance between them. Yeah, really excited for this one. I think it's going to be interesting, particularly the, the relationship with interracial and um, international adoption, something I've been thinking about and reading about recently. And it says it deals with the complexities of motherhood, infertility and race, the different ways we define family. So yeah, a family saga, but commenting on the really complicated situations people find themselves in when they try and have their, have children. Okay, and then this is another potentially depressed woman moving. At certain points we touch by Lauren John Joseph. Um, it tells the story of our narrators walking home from a club when they realise it's February 29th, the birthday of a man they would see as their first love. The story pieces together art and letters and memory to recount the doomed affair they had and burnt the decade before. So it says it moves through San Francisco, London and New York, a coming of age story that looks at toxic power play and countless victims. And all culminates in a terrible betrayal. Ooh, sounds pretty savage, but really interesting. A stone cold masterpiece. Story of destruction. Let's see how many pages. 384. Okay, this is a chunky boy. I was going to say like, wow, is it a really short novella? But no, this is a big, long winded, like recollection of someone's 10 years of their life. Okay, okay. Um, the penultimate book I have to share with you is The School of Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan. I've seen people talking about this as well. I think it's going to be another one of those like big debuts of the year. I believe it's like um, futuristic, semi like near future dystopian. A kind of society bent on punishing mothers for their parenting mistakes, setting out a chilling future vision of misogyny and control. The state has decided that Frida is not fit to care for her daughter, so she must be retrained at the school for good mothers. A thrilling novel about the pressures of perfectionism and privilege. I feel like this could come off and be like really spectacular. Someone reviewed it as talking about the cult of motherhood, which that is definitely a cult, but like, perfect mothers um but I don't know it could also be a bit trite and gimmicky so we'll have to see I did mention before I'm not that into like feminist feminist dystopian but I did like The Farm by Joanna Ramos and that sounds a bit like this okay the last one nope actually the second to last one again sorry <laughs> this is Monarch by Candice I'm not sure how you pronounce her surname I'm sorry um this is published by Soft Skull Press and I cannot find a UK publisher or UK publishing date, but I want to tell you about it because I want to read it really bad. Um, this again is one of those weird shit books that I think sounds really good and it's a bit dystopian. So it says, um, a former child pageant star unwittingly begins an investigation into the nefarious deep state underworld her father is dr clink the professor of boredom studies and the founder of an elite study group known as the devil's worship she uncovers a disquieting connection between her life as a former beauty queen and an offshoot of a project known as monarch she moves close to this truth and suspects the involvement of everyone around her including her mother a, a norwegian pageant queen turned occult american wellness guru and with the help from her riot girl babysitter and confidant, she starts on the path to take down Project Monarch. It merges the iconic true story, true crime stories of the 90s with theories of human consciousness, folklore and cultural fixation of dead girls. Oh, this sounds like it's gonna be so good and I'm obsessed with this Barbie cover. So this might be one that my American friends will need to send me a copy of because sounds like it's gonna be pretty wild. That's out on the 22nd of March in America. <laughs> wow, brain fog. Okay, and the last one I have to share you, I'm saying it's like not fully a last one for me, but I think you guys would really like it and maybe I'll give it a go. This is an otherwise healthy woman um, and it won the Backwaters Poetry Prize. And this is a collection of poetry 
all about illness. So it says it deals with the complexity of modern healthcare illness and healing and offers an alternative narrative to those heroic and miracles. It looks at her experience as a nurse and a patient and the poems in this collection teach us to acknowledge the longing compassion we all have for each other and the immediate the, and the immediate human responses to suffering looks at the perspective looks at fear and failure and the role a woman plays so yeah again on sickness chronic illness and it's a piece of poetry um by an american indie press so yeah that's all i have for you for reads in march if you guys are excited to read any of these please let me know if you have any other books on your radar for march i would love to hear about them as always, it would mean the world to me if you subscribe, like this video, etc, etc. My Instagram is linked down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.